Hello everyone, I'm Uche Philippe Modi. I'm the lead principal consultant for Onihome.ng. Onihome.ng is a business that focuses on property recommendations in Lagos, Abuja, and some other states in Nigeria, and also real estate education. So after about two to three years in the business, about a year ago, I made the decision to move to the UK, not permanently, but for studies. I wanted to do a planning and real estate course to improve my knowledge on the subject matter of what I was telling people and also to in improve and increase my exposure to the market. About 50 to 60% of people that invest in Nigeria real estate are Nigerians in the diaspora. And so about this time last year, I came into the UK about 13th, 14th of September, 2023. After a year, I made the decision to leave the UK, but not in the way that is common. But before I get to that, I'm going to talk about my top five regrets about moving to the UK and about life in the UK. And then I'm going to continue with why I'm moving back. So the very first regret, the very, very, very first regret that I'll say is that I miscalculated how bad this current administration, their economic policies would go. I miscalculated how bad it would be. When I started the process, the dollar to the Naira exchange was about 500. And that's before the unification of FX rates. And that's actually what I had in mind that we we're going to use get the form A. And then Tinubu came and then he, he scrapped all of it. <laughs> so good and fine. Everything kind of like went, the dollar went to about 700. And I think the pound was about 900. It kept on going up. And um, somebody advised me that apart from that, because of, you know, I think it was around September before I came, because lots of people were, wanted to, were going to be traveling abroad for school, there was going to be a lot of pressure on the dollar and also on the pound. And after October, November, December, it settled down. <laughs> Wrong advice. Like I said, I just, I miscalculated how bad this thing would be. And so I, I was so exposed to the Naira when I was coming here. I didn't change all of my Naira. Um, some of the stuff that I sold in Nigeria, I allowed people to pay me on a payment plan. They hadn't even finished paying. They were taking their time. And obviously, like we thought, the pressures will reduce, right? And things will become better. Then I can change it. But oh boy, oh boy, it got worse. At the end of that last year, the dollar had gone to 2,000, over 2,000. Obviously, whatever I had in savings was useless. And if I could have actually changed it, and also even the way it was coming, because like I said, it was in payment plan. If I could have actually changed it, I could have easily, easily been coming to this country with probably five to six K in extra savings after all of my expenses. But that didn't happen, and that kind of like was my <laughs> was my very my very first regret. That I said, okay, um, I wish I did this better. I wish I could have just ruthlessly changed and not bet on the naira, which is crazy if you think about it. Then my second regret was because I was a founder, a CEO at MD. In fact, recently somebody was telling was trying to invite me for an event, actually organizing an event i'm going to talk about that later and you know i'm just going to show you the event on the screen it's going to be in canada ontario canada and he put the you know i'm supposed to be a speaker in that event and he put ceo md i told him please remove ceo and md <laughs> just call me a founder i think maybe until we are hitting millions of dollars in revenue profit rather that's when i can start calling myself a ceo but there was this prestige of being a founder and so there are some things that I decided back in Nigeria that when I was going to come here, I was not going to do any harm type of job, anything retail, security, um, 
I mean, I have no problems with, I, like, and I'm not looking down on the, um, there is, like they say, dignity in labor. I'm not looking down on people that do that, and I'm not saying that it is, but it was just a personal decision. Security, care jobs, any like, kind of those stuff that were not more my speed. I wanted to do something that was related to real estate or digital marketing because that's how I've built my business this far. Um, maybe organic um, search, Facebook ads, and the like. And so I decided I was not just going to get any type of job. And I chilled. And this also was because of the fact that I was a founder, I was building a business, and I was growing a business. And also this business in real estate. Real estate, you can literally be broke today and just <laughs> receive six, seven figures the next day. Um, I didn't do I didn't do a lot of um, like job searching, and um, for about seven months plus, I didn't look for like I didn't like really really look for a job in the UK. And did I search for a job? And the time when I was even open, let me see anything. Do you, <laughs> I wasn't even getting those um, kind of menial jobs, so to speak, and so. I would say um, if I had to do it again, probably would have started early enough. But then I, I think that the other time, the, pro the problem with that is that if you get something very, very menial, um, people kind of get on a hamster wheel and you're just looking for shift, looking for more shift, looking for shift and that's not going to be on your NI. and. Um, People were doing security work for 10 hours and a friend recently was telling me that he literally had to quit because he was making money but he didn't have any life. He was even lending people money. And I didn't want that. I like I didn't <laughs> there's a story in the Bible where Jesus Christ was talking about this shrewd manager. He said, I cannot dig and I cannot beg. And it's very, very good for people to know themselves. And I just knew myself, like that's not what I wanted to do. And I did eventually get a really, really nice job and um by working for you know, in London, it was hybrid, um, very, very nice, good pay, and every single thing, and aligned with everything that I'm doing, is aware of um, what I do, and then no clash and conflict of interest, it was kind of like the golden swan at the end of the day, but it did take some time before I got there, and um, maybe most things or kind of thing that I did face that was not very palatable, it could have been easier if I kind of like got a job from the get-go so that's my second regret then my third regret was staying in a nice apartment that's my third regret um staying in a nice apartment so before you can rent a house or rent an apartment you you need to either have a um a guarantor in the uk that's earning a certain amount of money or you just pay outright and i was not going to pay Ten thousand pounds outright because that was what it was going to cost for a whole year, and so putting an initial deposit. Um, I got a guarantor, but was not in the UK um, because I didn't really have anybody at that time in the UK that was willing to be my guarantor. But it was like almost one thousand pounds per month, and at some point I tried to get out of this contract because um, I mean I'll get back, to, I'll get to the reason in maybe the next um, the next point. I tried to get out the contract, but they say too bad you like it's for one year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not like Nigeria. Um or like where oh if you if you if you don't want to do it again, um there are places like that where after you've done the one year, then they now start to do like month on month, but you have to give them um you have to obviously give them give them notice on time. But when I tried to get out of it, Say too bad, man. You're locked in. <laughs> so like, and I was like, why, why did I go? And I'll tell you why I went for something that was that expensive. Why did I go for this expensive stuff? Um, I could have kind of gone for something that maybe like 50% cheaper. But I started out regretting that. But eventually I did find out that anything that was cheaper was going to be like rubbish. And that's something that lots, lots of lots of people don't um, don't <laughs> don't think about because you go to some apartments, you go to some flats, some houses, 
and then you start to ask in the UK, and then you start ask, ask yourself, I can't believe people are living like this. You're sharing a toilet with, you know, maybe five or six other people. You're sharing the kitchen. And that just is just a nightmare to me. And the quality of life that you're living, I don't think that living in such a place actually gives you or will have given me the the frame of mind to be able to build this business during that time or to even dream. So like I, f- I said about regretting it, but I didn't at the end of it because at the end of the day, I realized that where you live, the conditions of where you live is very, very important. And just because you're trying to save a few bucks, I don't think I, w- I, w- I would have loved to compromise or couch surf trying to run a business and complete my master's. I don't think I would have wanted or loved to couch surf because the options, the cheaper options, they are terrible. They're, in the UK, you cannot get a cheap option that is good anyways, according to my standard. And so the third regret ended up being something that I didn't regret because at the end of the day, um, you know, <laughs> it worked out. There were there were common areas where you could um, where you could lounge. Where I was doing some of my videos. It had a very massive courtyard where you could chill. Lots of public spaces. You know, there was a public ground there, and it was all in all. And obviously, like it was a service apartment, so I was not paying bills. And um, you know, they were very 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 nice. Similar people to where you think, and um, I think that. That that ended up being like you know one of the very best best decision, and because it was a corporation, a big corporation, people 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 always have this thing where they say, oh, would you prefer a mom and pop house flat or a big corporation? But the truth of the matter is that I'd rather a bigger corporation than a mom and pop because these bigger corporations. They are, you're just another number to them. Meanwhile, the mom and pop, literally, you're their source of <laughs> you're their source of livelihood. So they probably will not have the kind of flexibility that billionaire corporations would have, especially when it comes to everything around your utilities, your rent, being flexible around payments and what have you. So that that was a regret that ended up being nice and dandy and good for me. Then the fourth regret was that. I was not very consistent with my business at the very beginning. So back in Nigeria, you know, before I came, things were going good, closing deals left, right, and center. And um, YouTube was just an appendage of my life. The website was bringing in most of the um, most of the traffic and also most of the sales. And I'll post a YouTube video maybe once in two weeks, once in three weeks, um, every other time when they just. Um, and when I also came here. I literally had um, deals, prospective deals that were lined up that was up to the tune of 200 million naira. I was not going to make 200 million naira from it, but that was the worth of the, the deals that I had lined up. And easily, easily could have, could have fetched me 20 million plus in that deal. And um, so I kind of like made that huge mistake of calculating based on the life, because every single deal has a life lifetime or a life cycle so we're talking for many weeks many days for some of these people they were ready okay you know sending the uh, most of them were in the diaspora in the u.s sending their people to go and inspect and then we're going to close that deal um but then i i i learned a very valuable lesson and i learned it the hard way and i learned that you cannot you cannot make a decision or financial decision based on money that you're you're yet to receive and i know it sounds kind of like a no-brainer but if you're in that situation it's easy and that's why now i mean i mean kind of place that until the deposits the check hits the bank now nah, i'm like i'm not resting like <laughs> so um i started doing youtube more consistently i started posting more consistently I started working more consistently. If I'm one of my clients reached out to me, it's like, oh, yo, how are you managing your, your school and posting every day? At some point, I literally was posting a YouTube video every single day because 
you can't just relax because of people that have contacted you can't just relax about because of what you're expecting and you can't just like in nigeria you know because then, then you have bills to pay you have there are things that are looking for you to um, give them attention so you can't just relax and so i became more serious with my business here um it, the uk pushed me <laughs> it literally pushed me to become a more um, a wiser business person and a uh, you know and um, you know I mean I'm gonna talk about later like I hired more people here than when I was in Nigeria because this business just had to work this business I just had to be smarter about how I did the business um, you know it's not just like for instance in Nigeria you pay your rent for a whole year and you're not thinking of rent for the entire year there's several things you're not thinking of for a long time and necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. And also learned about like a lot of about human psychology and how human beings. You don't have to trust, put your trust in human beings. It's business at the end of the day. But to me, I think that the worst part of it is that if you're talking to somebody for weeks and something changes, I think the I think the 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 least you owe the person is just oh things have changed and rather than just ghosting or <laughs> silence. But I learned that it's part of the business, and you know. We move, we pick ourselves up and we move. So not being very not being very serious with the business. Not that I was not serious with the business, but it needed to I needed to to step up to another level of efficiency. And that's what being in the UK made me realise and quickly flip that regret up. So no, I think the fourth one, I think yeah, the fourth regret is that ah UK go wine you but no panic. Every single thing is negotiable and lots of people, they let um, deadlines, they let things you're supposed to do at a particular point get into them. It affects their mental health, it affects their focus, but every single thing is negotiable. They give you a deadline, oh, you're supposed to do this, but you're supposed to make this payment, you're supposed to have done this by this time. Call them up, negotiate something with them. Heaven will not fall when that deadline reaches, to be honest. And obviously, you're not supposed to be irresponsible and push it too much because <laughs> some people pushed it. And then I heard that, like, you know, the UK was sending some Nigerians back because they hadn't paid their fees at some particular point in time. But the truth of the matter is that every single thing is negotiable. No, let them whine you. No, let them whine you. There are opportunities for payment plans, there are opportunities to say, okay, this is coming at this time. Instead of paying three months or paying six months, can I pay monthly? If you do not stress test every single thing that you're given, you will just keep on, you like you will live in perpetual fear and yes, you will live in, yeah, you will not be focused. There is the need to realize that like, oh, the, they are calling you for this, speak to them, say, okay, can we make a payment plan around this? And you'll be fine, honestly. Not allowed the UK to whine you. And let me also talk about the importance of Having a digital skill, number one. Having a business, number two. And having God, number three. I think it should even be the other way around. Because if you come to this country without all of those things, people come here and you will, lose your, you will lose your mind. You can lose your mind if you don't have the soft landing. You can actually lose your mind. Obviously, having a Christian community, I had a wonderful community, RCCG Reading. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful community. That's very, very important. You know, and the fifth lesson that I learned is that UK, the system is trying to mold you. You know, I heard a pastor talk about um, <laughs> talk about Egypt and how when they saw the Israelites um, doing really, really good, they tried to um, they tried to put heavy burdens on them. Whether you like it or not, the system is trying to mold you in some way. And um, I see people or I interact with people that were a big deal back in Nigeria and then they come here and they're in the shadow of themselves. It's okay to be a shadow of yourself for maybe a year, two years, but after five years, you're still a shadow of yourself. You're still not touching the, the type of influence and like the level of life that you were in Nigeria. Like that system is forcing you. And then the, the, way, the way out is no more shift. The way out is not um, working harder, so to speak, in the sense of it. You do need to work hard. But the way, I, I think each person should just have some innegotiables around their lives. And each person should also try to start a business. 
at the end of the day because you're not getting rid from this system by more shifts in fact if you're even still on the shift level which is okay at the end of the day um there's just the more you work the more you're being taxed <laughs> so at the end of the day you may be working more shifts and you're ending the same thing with somebody that's not even working as much shifts that's such a that's such a I mean, it is progressive ta tax taxation for because um, I do have a friend that is working in tech and is earning some good money, um, earning about like ninety five to hundred k, and then the tax the tax taxation is progressive. But at the end of the day, you can't earn that. Maybe you're like you're doing a shift based job, honestly. So keep on investing in yourself, keep on upskilling, but never ever ever allow the system to like I talked about housing. I talked about having a job. All of all these things, you know, the system can just allow you to just stew in mediocrity and not want to even think high and think bigger. Just think that this is only what you have. And at this point, I want to shout out to the the amazing, the amazing, my amazing subscribers, clients that um, I've I've reached out to in my time here, Mr. Oginam. Very, very amazing, um, very, very amazing client. Um, Mr. Ladi, very, very amazing. <laughs> um, Governor, Mr. Governor Jibs, he literally, one time he drove in from London, 45 minutes drive, he drove in from London, he brought kids for me, he gave him money. He was like, Uche, you're doing a massive job. I love when young people are, like, literally, off the blues. And I, um, Mrs. Edith, I can't, I, I can't even start to put into words how much of a blessing these that this community that people that are just watching me on youtube people that haven't met me before um reach out you know they trust us they want to do business and want to support in one way or the other if they want to do something in nigeria um you know they 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 want to reach out basically and that's why i do want to start a a community for nigerian investors in the diaspora i want to start a community and it's going to be on the link on the in the description and of the of the of the of the tail of that i did see in the beginning that i'm moving back to nigeria but not in the way that is common so i am i'm doubling down on my investment in nigeria basically so um we're coming up with a web platform um we're, we're working on it to have a new platform i'm hiring more people from nigeria right now we're going to be doing more properties we're going to be listing more and more properties and we're going to be having events the very first event that we're going to be having is in um toronto canada and it's all about the exchange um a real estate exchange and the, the flag is going to be on the screen we're going to be talking about investing both in the country or the city that you're in and also investing in nigeria we're going to be finding kind of like the balance so if you're in toronto canada pull up for this event register on the link below and um, if you want special discounts, just tell me. <laughs> we'll make that available for you. But it's going to be the first in a series of events. The last one we're going to be having is in the London, U London, UK. And then we're going to be having something like that in the US as well. And seeing as this is literally the major reason. I didn't come here to Jackba. This is the major reason why I came here to be able to have a community, number one. And also be, um, you know, be more versed about this industry and not just be talking you know <laughs> talking from the air so you're going to get value from me you're going to be able to meet us if you've been thinking of um, investing and need more clarity you're going to be um, able to see us we're going to be having these physical events and very soon we'll be having it in nigeria as well and thank you so very much for watching kindly like kindly share kindly subscribe this is the only home tv show here only home we believe only in the home in the property it should not make you lose sleep so we're committed to giving you the very best property recommendations and insider real estate gist kindly like kindly share kindly subscribe i'll see you at the very next video bye bye